Hello world, welcome to the 82nd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is the second video in my Python for Fitness playlist. And uh, in the last video, we calculated our basal metabolic rate, and then we figured out our activity level, and then we calculated our macros. And uh, this is a great start especially if this is the first time you've um, you know, started your fitness journey, but it's just an estimation. And so if you want to um, you know, either lose weight or gain muscle or get shredded faster, you gotta be as accurate as possible. And so to make it more accurate, we need to get more accurate data. So I recently bought a Fitbit Charge 4 and uh, I worked out with it on recently, this morning or yesterday morning, I should say. And using my desktop uh, or a non-mobile Fitbit dashboard, uh, I was able to export the data into a CSV file, uh, basically in Excel, and uh, we can use it in our calculations. And this is important because um, when you fit, start your fitness journey, journey and you start working with some of the estimations, what we normally do is that we underestimate how much we really eat and that's because we don't think about stuff like condiments like ketchup has sugar high fructose corn syrup mayo uh, stuff like that and so we underestimate usually how much we eat in a day and then we also overestimate how hard we worked out so if you live in a humid area you might assume because you sweat that it was super intense but really it has to do with your heart rate and so due to do Due to these two factors, the estimations you use might not get you to your weight loss goals in the time you want. And so the Fitbit is going to help us get more accurate data. So what you can do is you go to Fitbit.com, you set up your dashboard by connecting to your Fitbit. Then you go to this gear here. Then you go to settings. Then you can go to data export and then you can uh, pick whatever you want. So I only wear mine during my workout and so I unclick all these and then um, you know it, you could select what you want. I think I pick this month and then you press download and it'll go to your downloads folder. Okay so let's I already downloaded it so let's uh, take a look at what mine looks like so I will close out and it looks like I did the last month and so I only used it twice so the 26th which was Friday and the 27th which was yesterday and here we have activity calories. So it's good at figuring out when you're working out by comparing it to your average heart rate. And uh, so as you can see right here, 537 activity calories. Of that, these were the calories right here of my workout in terms of lightly active, fairly active, and very active. So 537 calories yesterday, or yesterday was legs. All right, so we can use that in our program. So make sure you watch uh, the last video. I'll put a link in the description. So let's look at what the estimations show us. So we're gonna do the same thing as the last video, add my weight, 155. My height, 64 inches. Yes, I'm short. My age, 38, yeah, still as old as the last video. And then I'm a male. So I picked last time that I exercised four to five times a week. So that was my exercise rate. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna times that by my basal metabolic rate of 1,535 calories. So let's enter three. So it is telling me that my to maintain my current weight, I need to eat 2,241 calories. 
So if I ate that, then I would maintain my weight. If I want to cut down by losing 0.5 pounds of fat a week, I would need to drop it to 1,991. Okay, so now let's uh, read, figure out how much with my actual working out using yesterday's data I would need. So let's run this again. Okay, still 155 from a couple of seconds ago. Haven't grown much. I've probably aged a little bit in one minute. Okay, so my basal met metabolic rate was 1,535. That hasn't changed. I only burnt, or not only, but I burnt 537 calories yesterday. So my daily caloric needs are 2,072 calories, right? And so that's important because in the previous code, it showed that I needed 2,200 calories. So if I keep eating 2,200 2, calories, thinking that was my daily caloric needs based off the estimation, eventually... And to be exact, um, around seven days, I'd be gaining a pound, right? And so I would actually need to eat only 2,000 to maintain my current weight. And that's the importance of getting accurate data. So what we're going to do is go through what we just did. So we're going to have to import CSV. So from CSV, import reader. That's a lowercase r. CSV is a part of your standard Python library, so you don't have to pip install that. Um, we're going to pass it the BMR that we did in the last video. So please watch it if you haven't. And then you need to find where you downloaded that file. And in future videos, we're going to automatically move that file to somewhere else using the nomenclature or the naming convention that we want. So as you can see, it's in my downloads folder. You can right click in here or click in here and just press copy, right? So you can press copy address, but either way, you're going to declare a variable. I called it the Fitbit file and then equals. And then I posted the total um, name of it. And then we're going to do with open then you pass it the path that you just set up, R as in read, as F. You can name this whatever you want. Uh, this is a standard um, naming convention. Then CSV reader equals reader with the lowercase r. You pass it this F. Then let me show you what that file looks like one more time and show you what I had to do. So if you download a bunch of information, you will have headers. And that's common in externally produced uh, Excel files. So these are your column headers, right? But they're not the first row. And CSV or XLRD or most standard Python um, Excel interfaces assume that your column headers are in the first row. And as you can see, this is not. If I or imported sleep, you would see sleep on a blank row. So what we had to do here is you just call next CSV reader. And this means it's going to go to the very next line. Right? That's going to start it. You can also create an index column if you wanted and manually hard code where your index column is but i just use next it's easier so for each row in the csv reader because uh the python csv it uses uh, iteration you have to iterate before you can declare anything so i want my acti activity calories in the last row which is minus one so what that's doing is it's going to go all the way here and it's going to find this, this very last row here, and this very last row column here. That's what this negative one does. And then I just called it activity calories. Now, it is important to know that everything in a CSV is a string. So this is a string, even though it's a date. 
this is a string even though it's a number now I have Excel a modern Excel so it can find it as a uh, if I were to use this data in Excel it would know that if this is a date this is a number and I can use it accordingly Python does not know that it thinks it's a string so if you want to use it in math like I did so um, you have to change it to an integer and to prove that here if I put integer here, I would get an error and it would tell me you cannot concatenate an integer. But it's a string, so I just added it here. And then to do math on it, I had to make it an integer. So you burnt 527 cal 537 calories yesterday. That's what this is. And then to do math on it, I had to add it to the BMR by creating an integer. So your daily caloric needs are blank, 2,072 calories. Now, like all try or all um, programs that you create, try to start implementing try and catches. Um, oops, because let's say I did not have this file here right and we wanted to view it so yep let me get rid of that let me get rid of this so let's try it again so you haven't downloaded the most recent file yet so that's what this try and accept is so I got I threw a file not found error and I received this print error so pretty good. So if you're trying to start your fitness journey and you want to use Python, just remember the more accurate your data is, the more accurate and quicker you can reach your fitness goals. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in Python for Fitness or me building a digital assistant. Uh, like this video and thanks for watching. Goodbye world.